Copenhagen to Cancun. We knew before this would be not an easy road, uh, but uh, I'm being here now since three days. I'm quite surprised about uh, the non-ambitious strategy of the negotiators. Um, I don't know. Uh, I must say I'm maybe already a little bit surer than before that this way to negotiate and this content of the negotiations right now will never ever lead us to an international binding agreement and also it will not help us uh, to meet uh, the uh, climate targets as agreed already in Bali. Uh, when I met my colleague Hermann Ott from the German Bundestag, the German Parliament, uh, some weeks ago in Berlin, he proposed an interesting uh, side or parallel strategy uh, to overcome a little bit uh, this uh, these pending uh, of the process here in Cancun. Uh, I found it very interesting, Hermann. Well, the basic assumption is that the United States, and that has become quite clear after the last elections, the midterm elections, the United States will probably in the next 10 years not ratify any international binding treaty on climate change. And that changes the whole picture because up to now everybody has had the assumption, well, if we give the US enough at some point it will come in. We cannot calculate that in anymore and that means we've got to do it without. I call it the uh, climate policy of different speeds, like in, the, in, in Europe. I mean, we've got the Euro countries, we've got the Schengen countries, but the basis is for all, but groups of countries move faster. And uh, this is the only way out of the deadlock, and it would provide the European Union with the opportunity to show that it's actually possible. And also in geopolitical terms, it would put Europe on the same footing with China and the United States. Yes, could be, but uh, the, one of the real questions concerning this idea is, um, are those countries, EU and, uh, for example, the Cartagena Group, uh, are they able to deliver on uh, reductions as much as would be necessary because uh, they, they are not the main emitters? No, but uh, there's real success. The European Union has reduced its emissions by 17.3% at the moment. Still, they are proposing to go for 20% in 2020, which is hilarious. Um, but there is a real success in the European Union, and uh, this has to be sustained. And in order to be sustained, there must be higher targets. Otherwise, I mean, if we don't have higher targets, we don't reach there, we don't even try. Mm. And then the whole thing is in danger. And that's what we have to hammer out here in Cancun towards the European Union. Go for 30, at least 30 percent, because that will lead and that will then convince other countries to follow. Mm. One of the problems indeed is uh, that we as the Greens could never uh, really have um, a success concerning the new targets. Since we have agreed in the European Union on the 20% target, we stick to this target. It's a kind of frozen decision making. Um, I'm not sure whether we are going to leave Cancun with uh, optimistic perspectives to achieve the 30% target. Well, it would be difficult here in Cancun, although all the environment ministers will be here mm. from the European Union, uh, but they have to take decisions here to take it to the Council in March. And there in March, that's the occasion to then say the European Union will aim for a 30% target and invites others mm. to join. And this will restore the credibility because the Union has lost all its credibility with the developing countries mm. because of its um, laziness and also because it's given up Kyoto. Mm. And uh, that is slowly coming back. Yeah. And if the Union no, now also aims high, um, real progress next year might be possible. But the fact is, as long as the Union waits for the United States to come in, there will be no real progress. So it has to come to the conclusion we must do it on our own with China, India, with Japan, and uh, we, we will lead the world into yeah. the climate uh, safe future. And we have all what we need to do this because uh, so we have the technology, we have uh, all 
uh, the knowledge is, uh, we have the citizens behind the ideas of ambitious climate strategy. So leading by example would give Europe a, a lot of credibility back in this process. Well, it's industry that is uh, actually um, making the problems here. And it's, their yeah, it's industry's the part, but not the only problem. Yeah. And the fossil industry is really taking its, uh, all its efforts, pulling it out mm. now, uh, in order to prevent the union from actually moving mm. further ahead. Mm. Uh, the people want it. I mean, all the opinion polls in all the European countries show it. Politicians want it because they are convinced that it might uh, appeal to the mm. voters. And, but as long as the environment ministers are not strong enough to pull, I mean, we've had the German, the British and the French environment minister calling for the 30%, but all three countries are actually opposing it in the council. But the, yeah, the problem is always again and again these are only the environmental ministers and not uh, the governments uh, from the member states as a whole. And if you take the German example, Mr. Röttgen is uh, pushing for 30%, but when it comes to decision making in Brussels, he's sending his colleague from the cabinet, Mr. Brüderle, and he's never ever the one to push for 30%. So we badly need change in government, Germany at latest in 2013, and in a number of other European countries to actually move forward. Let's fight for that. Okay, we will wait and see the results in Cancun, and next step will be to get better governments.